Welcome to Lit Crit as Fuck, the audio experience in which I say shit about stuff and you listen to junk. Previously on the show, and we learned that sensualists like to experience self-loathing while getting really great blowjobs. We learned that Smerdjikov makes a really great fish stew and is kind of in love with Yvonne. A while back, I mentioned in passing that there was an officer that Dimitri beat up. That will bear fruit, finally. I learned there's a book in the Bible with a talking donkey. And Dimitri really just needs to rethink his whole life. Title card. The Brothers Karamazov by Fyodor Dostoevsky. Part four. Ya bit. So last we left off, Alyosha had gone to sleep after having a day of his family. And, and, and he wakes up because that's what you do after you sleep. And we get to see some of the monks in the monastery, particularly this man called Father Farapont, whose fathers though seem as arch nemesis kind of. I mean, his entire point in this book is to be a sort of foil to Father Zosima. Father Farapont is crazy pants. He's Looney Tunes. The monks, they fast. That's a thing they do. He overdoes it. I mean, he eats so little that he's definitely hallucinating. He often thinks that he's seeing demons and believes that Jesus is going to take him away and it's really scary. He's also angry. And I think that if you're hungry all the time, you probably are a little bit grumpy. So he's a grumpy pants. He doesn't like Zosima. Zosima does not rub him the right way. Father Farabunt is one of those people who wants really, really badly to be the most important person in the room, but he never is. So Zosima being as good as he is and as, you know, kind and so forth, he's still going to have to deal with other human beings and human beings aren't perfect. I think Yvonne would agree with that. Foreshadowing. So that's Father Farapont. He's crazy. He's kind of a jerk. He starves himself in order to feel important. And he lives at the monastery. Zosima and Alyosha are kind of hanging out. And Zosima tells Alyosha he needs to go. Kid, you gotta go. You can't keep coming back here. He says, you have to go and take care of your family. Alyosha's worried because Zosima is dying. He's going to die soon and that if he leaves, Zosima's going to die and he won't be there. So Father Zosima promises that he will not die until he has spoken to him one more time. So he says, okay, go. You gotta go help your family because shit's going down with those motherfuckers. Alyosha goes. Then he's like, okay, I'm gonna go to my dad's. I'm gonna go see how Fyodor Pavlovich is doing. Fyodor Pavlovich is really grouchy because he got beat up by his own son. Alyosha cheers him up just by kind of existing. They talk about Ivan a little little bit. And although Dmitri is the one who beat him up, Fyodor Pavlovich admits that he's more afraid of Ivan than anyone else. And then Alyosha leaves. On his way to Madame Hokokova's, he stumbles upon some schoolboys. There's one boy throwing rocks at the group of boys, and the group of boys are throwing rocks back. The group of boys are taunting the other boy by yelling, Threadbeard! Alyosha asks what it's about, but never gets a straight answer. The boy throws a rock directly at Alyosha. It becomes clear that this has something to do with him being a Karamazov. Alyosha tries to understand what's going on. He talks to this boy. The boy refuses to answer him in any meaningful way. He throws another rock at Alyosha and then takes a nice big bite out of Alyosha's hand. Yeah, bit! The boy bursts into tears and runs away. Alyosha arrives at Madame Hukokova's and she's flitting to and fro a buzz, if you will, about Katya and Ivan. They're both there and she wants Katya to just forget about Dimitri and just marry Yvonne and that would be nice and clean. She's kind of going on and on and Alyosha's bleeding profusely and he's like, "Uh, could you do something about this? And um, so Lisa and Madame Hokokova uh, tend to his wound and um, wrap it and so forth. Then Alyosha goes and he has a private conversation with Lisa about the letter that she wrote him um, asking him to marry her. She claims that it was a joke. He knows that she's just embarrassed. Now Yvonne has been spending a lot of time with Katya because this story involves two love triangles connected at the Dimitri. Madame Hokokova brings Alyosha into her drawing room where Katya and Yvonne are sitting and they've just finished having a conversation. Yvonne is not happy. He has just heard Katya's plans regarding Dimitri. Katya admits that he's made a lot of bad choices and he's been pretty terrible to her. It's 
sounds like she's going to say that she's done with him. But instead, her plan is to dedicate her life to him, even if, you know, he marries Grushinka. Kati is insisting that she is going to suffer, and she's going to suffer on purpose. Alyosha, upon hearing this, abruptly and shockingly, just loses his cool. He does not abide. Uh, the dude minds. This will not stand. He gives her what's what. He tells Katya that she is full of shit. He accuses her of what he calls self-laceration, which is um, the same thing that Father Farapont does. It is forcing yourself to suffer out of pride. These characters can go into this kind of religious fever over their own suffering and kind of bathing in their own suffering. See, Katya is also a Karamazov. She just wants to loathe herself while looking into a mirror. She doesn't really want the blowjob. The blowjob is the feeling you get when you think you are morally superior to others. Yvonne then says that he's leaving. And at first, Katya is like, oh, you're leaving? But then she's like, oh, that's wonderful. And the reason is because she wants to send like a letter to her sister and her aunt in Moscow. And that's where Yvonne is going. And so that way Yvonne can explain it to them and she won't have to write this letter. So it becomes more convenient for her. And this is when Alyosha just loses it. This aggression will not stand, man. He's like, how can you be like happy he's leaving like that? Just because it's convenient for you, for him to go to Moscow. You don't care about him at all. You don't care about anybody but yourself. And then Yvonne gets up and he's like, no, 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 it's okay. Don't worry about it. She never loved me. She knows I love her. She doesn't care. I'm done. I'm leaving. It's over. Bye-bye. Katya gets really pissed off at Alyosha, but then she kind of gets over it pretty quickly. Before Alyosha leaves, she stops him and asks him to go to see the officer that Dmitri had beaten up. Because he was one of the people that was working with Grushinka and Fyodor Pavlovich in that whole scheme to get him arrested. And so she gives him 500 rubles and she's like, can you bring this to him? Tell him it's as for from a sister because we have both been wronged by the same man. The officer is living in abject poverty. Several members of his family suffer from a variety of ailments. He's in a rough spot. So Katya decides that she wants to give this guy some money and help him out a little bit. Alyosha might actually be somebody who could convince this man to take the money. She tasks him with this quest. So before I go any further, I need to make some disclaimers. I love disclaimers and I don't make enough of them. We will be now journeying to the officer who Dimitri beat up's home and we will be meeting his family. Some issues come into play with my ability to pronounce things and also a certain boy's name. The officer's son is an important character and his name is Ilyusha. Now, nobody wants to see what happens when I try to tell this story talking about Alyosha and Ilyusha. Nobody. Nobody wants that. So what I've decided to do with that is I'm going to slightly mispronounce Ilyusha's name in a way that I've seen. I researched a little bit and saw that it was translated as Ilusha in some texts. I'm not entirely sure if how that works, but it helps me. So if I call him Ilyusha, Lucia, it will be slightly less maddening to try to talk about him and Alyosha in the same sentence. And that happens a lot. Secondly, the officer is actually a former officer. He was let go from the military. There's it's never explained why. And that's the reason that he is in such dire straits. His name is Snigerov or something like that. I just, I can't pronounce that name over and over again. So it's just easier for me to call him the officer. And that is what he will be referred to as. Now, a little backstory into what really happened. So Fyodor Pavlovich is pretty much everybody's boss in a lot of ways in this town. He owns so much of the land. He has a lot of power. If he asks you to do something, you kind of have to, especially if you are lower class. So he asked Grushinka, or rather told Grushinka and this officer to get Dmitri in trouble. There is very little actual um, information about what was involved in this. So what we know is that Fyodor Pavlovich had these two trying to do something regarding IOUs and getting Dmitri in trouble for them. The officer is in a tavern with his young son and Dmitri probably busts in through a door or a wall and grabs the officer by his beard and drags him out of the tavern and just beats this fellow in the street in front of his young son. When Dmitri grabbed this beard, 
He yanked a lot of the beard out. The beard is now thinner. It is a little bit more threadbare or possibly a thread beard. See where, see where I'm going with this? Yeah. So the kid who bit Alyosha is the officer's son. Elusha. Elusha bit Alyosha. He is dealing with the aftermath of having witnessed his father being beaten by a man who is in a position of power. As a young boy, to watch your father be beaten up is devastating in its own right. But also it turns out that, you know, there's no uh, there's no justice to, to be had in this situation. Poor people don't get justice. And this has a very intense, harsh effect on the boy. So Elusha starts to act out against his classmates. And then, of course, he sees Alyosha, who he knows is a Karamazov. He knows is Dmitri's brother. They're pretty famous in the town. I mean, like I said, Fyodor Pavlovich pretty much owns everything there. So when he sees Alyosha, knowing it's Dmitri's brother, he starts to attack him. He starts to throw stones at Alyosha. Now, when Alyosha enters the home of the officer, Elusha pretty quickly says, oh, he's here because of me. No doubt expecting this guy to show up eventually. He did bite him, after all. And Alyosha just, he sees him and he's like, oh, I get it now. That's what was going on. And he's like, no, 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 I'm not here for that. I'm here for something else completely. So he and the officer go out onto the balcony to talk privately. And Alyosha offers him the money. Upon hearing that he's being offered 500 rubles, the officer becomes ecstatic. He's thinking about all of the things he can do with this money, like feed his family and get them proper medical care, things like that. The officer's mood turns suddenly and drastically, as if something has just dawned on him. And it is that he does not want to take this money, because how is he going to explain this to his son? So the officer crumples the money and throws it on the ground and says, screw you, no, go away. Alyosha takes the money back. It ends with him picking up the money, putting it in his pocket, and starting back to Katya's to let her know that the guy didn't take the money. Lacerations. Next time, on this thing that I do, we will learn that Smirjikov is not, I repeat, not Ian Curtis. Ivan and Alyosha are going to have a really long conversation, and it's the best part of the book. It's happening. Guys, it's happening. Tune in next time for Child Torture and Jesus. What? It's accurate. <laughs>